I just got approved for SSDI and I'll be on disability forever. Hold up. Wait a minute. That's not how disability works in SSA. Because in this video, I'm going to introduce you to what's called a continuing disability review, otherwise known as a CDR. I'll discuss what it is, help you to understand why it's important, and take you a little bit through the process. If you're ready for this, let's get it started. If you're planning on applying for SSDI, this is about time we had a little talk on how this would look after you get approved or allowed because we're going to speak it into existence. We're just going to assume that you are going to be allowed and approved. Every case that gets approved is given what's called a diary. A diary is basically a window of time in which you're going to receive these SSDI benefits. That diary may be one year, it may be two years, it may be three years, it may even, it may even be seven years. So when you get close to the end of that diary date, SSA triggers an alert and that alert is signaling the start of the next phase, which is called a continuing disability review, also known as a CDR. A CDR is the point in which the DDS looks at your situation again and then determines whether you have improved enough to be taken off the disability rolls. Yeah, you heard me. When you start receiving benefits, your case could come up for review in a few years and SSA may actually find you not disabled at that time. So let's get into the nuts and bolts of what a CDR is. We're not gonna get too deep off into it. So what I'm gonna do is just break it down into four simple truths about a CDR. Truth number one, at a CDR, the burden of proof is no longer on you. See, when you first file for disability, the burden of proof was on you to prove that you were disabled. That's why you have to get all these medical records in and then make a case for Social Security to determine that they agree with you. Yes, you are disabled and you're put on benefits for those reasons. However, at the CDR, the burden of proof is on Social Security to prove that you are no longer disabled. So they have to update your records and, and then determine based on the current records and how your old records looked. If your situation has changed enough to where they can take you off the disability rolls and send you back to work. So social security needs to make a strong case to prove that you are ineligible to continue receiving benefits. Truth number two, the most important word in a CDR is significant. See the DDS doesn't use the same sequential evaluation process that they used when you first filed for disability, they use a different method and that method is called MERS, the Medical Improvement Review Standard. They look at your last decision, your last favorable decision, which is called a comparison point decision. They take that decision and then they look at your medical records now and they do what's called a side-by-side. -side. They put both side by side and they look at and look at both and they see okay this is what they look like when they were put on benefits this is what they look like now if there is significant improvement from the comparison point decision or cpd from what's being seen here if there's significant improvement then the likelihood is you're not going to stand benefits if they can't prove that there is significant medical improvement and it looked pretty close, or there's really not significant medical improvement, then you're likely to stay on the rolls. Truth number three, if SSA determines that you are no longer disabled, you can still appeal a CDR. There are two appeals levels in a CDR process. The first level is what's called a pre-hearing, and exactly what it sounds like, it's, it's a decision before an actual hearing. So another disability team at the DDS looks at your case after the CDR has been uh, determined you are not eligible to receive benefits anymore. They look at the decision and see if that decision was correct. If they say that the CDR was correct, 
Then it goes to the next level, which is called a disability hearing unit. It's kind of like going to an administrative law judge or an ALJ, except we're looking at people in the DDS who are officers responsible for doing disability hearings. They have been trained to hold these hearings, whether in person or in some cases virtually. And their job is to look at the case one more time and determine if the decision at the CR and the pre-hearing was in fact correct. And it is a situation where you would appear before this disability hearing officer to make your case on what's happening in your claim. Truth number four, you can work after your CDR, but SSA provides what's called a trial work period. It's a nine month period that allows you to test the waters to see if you can go back to work. Because quite frankly, there are a lot of people who don't want to stay on the road. They want to work again. So Social Security gives them that provision to say, to say that if you want to work, we'll give you a cushion to, to, do, to do some kind of work and not be penalized by having to work and get benefits. So in essence, you can work and not lose your SSDI, but there are stipulations to this. But here's an important point. If at any time you decide that you can't hack it, that you've tried for four months on a trial work period to work and it didn't work out, well, you don't have to work anymore. Nothing changes except those months may count towards your trial work period. So if you work for four months and decide that you couldn't do anything else, then you can stop working, continue to get your SSDI, but you will already have been four months into that trial work period. So you have five months left to go in your trial work period. Here's another important point. Your TWP months only count against you if you earn above the trial work period limit, which is $1,050 a month gross pay. So if you work under the TWP, you won't lose any months. But if you earn above that TWP, then you are going to have those months counted against you. In the example we talked about, if you worked for those four months and you earned $900 each month in gross pay, you don't have any months used. You get to keep the $900 and you still will get your SSDI. Now, let's say that you earned over the TWP limit all nine months and you run out of months. Then you move into what's called an extended period of eligibility or EPE. The EPE can last up to 36 months. Any month you work in the EPE and earn over the SGA limit, which is $1,470 each month gross, for 2023 will result in your benefits being suspended. But if your earnings fall under the SGA limit, then your benefits are reinstated. It's a running clock, which means you can cycle back and forth between being over the limit and being under the limit. And anytime you're over the limit, your benefits are suspended. But when you fall under the limit, your benefits are reinstated. However, the first month you work above SGA after your EPA ends that 36 month, your benefits are terminated. And even then it may not be over for you getting SSDI benefits. There's more to this process that I won't share right now because it's just gonna be a whole lot of information. But this is gonna give you a good start in understanding the CDR process and being able to know how to navigate it down the road if you are allowed or approved. So that's all I got for this intro to the CDR. I hope this has been enlightening and it gives you some reassurance that even when you are allowed and you may be uh, reviewed at some point, there are some cases where you may be on forever, but there are some cases where you won't. It depends on the person's situation. So I just wanna make sure you're aware of the process uh, on a basic level. So at least you have a working knowledge of it. Now I've got more videos, I'm sure you know that, don't go away, don't leave me hanging, because I'm gonna see you on the other side.